three, two, one. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy GP, and you're rocking with me on the return of the Aqua Method podcast. Can you believe it? It's been so long since I've done this thing, but I'm ready to to start it up again. Uh, a lot of things have changed with me since uh, since the last time I did the AMP. First of all, I'm no longer in Louisiana. I live in the wonderful mountainous state of Colorado. Thank goodness, and uh, and yeah, it was it was always a goal of mine to spread my wings and and see what the rest of the, the country had to offer. So yeah, I'm here in Colorado, and um, I really like it here. I mean, the only thing I miss from Louisiana is my um, it's the the warmth. It's cold here, man. It is cold here. Like I'd be looking at my mom's uh, weather, you know, because I got her the hometown uh, linked up on the weather app. And I got my current location and my current home uh, linked up in the weather app. And at night, it can be like, it could be like 15 degrees, negative three, all types of wild shit. Over in Louisiana, it'd be like 55 degrees at night. And I, I wish it was 55 degrees in the daytime over here. You know what I'm saying? So it's um it's a it's a bit of an adjustment, but I I like it here. I love the the mountains are beautiful. I've never as a man who's grown you know, most of his life under sea level, um, or close to it. It's a, it's a really beautiful thing to see mountains. Like, like you just see them in paintings, you see them in movies, you know, when you see them in real life, it's, 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 it's really, really cool. But, uh, it sounds like, uh, you know, I, I feel like I sound weird to say that, you know, like this boy ain't never seen mountains. He ain't never been nowhere. Oh, the snow though is dope. And it's a shame that you can't get snow without cold, but like when it's cold and snowing, it's beautiful. Oh man, I love it. I, I'll be outside. Again, I'm born and raised in Louisiana. We get snow once every two years, once every two years. And, um, and it's, and it's bananas. And everyone, and I tell people when out here, when, uh, when snow happens, everybody's outside because it's so rare. So here, when it snows, I go outside because I don't, I'm not used to seeing this fluffy white stuff falling from the sky. That's just not something that I'm used to, you know? So I gotta, um, you know, I appreciate it. Every time I see snow, big fluffy, you know, snowflakes and stuff like that, then they got different types of snow. I ain't know nothing about it, but it's beautiful and I like it. But the cold without the snow can kiss my, and uh, I don't, I don't like the cold, man. But. It's my least favorite thing about here, and it's a very minor thing. It's something that I'm willing to deal with to live here. It's okay, you know. Uh, I'm still in TV. You know, I don't do radio anymore. I haven't done radio in a long time. I really like my radio show, but um, I'm still doing TV. I work with some very talented, very cool people. Um, I really like my coworkers. So, um, so shout out to all of them. Hopefully you're looking. And I am uh, the director I'm a director of the TV station, but I am the director of the weekend show. And I take great pride in that. And I really like my team, my weekend team. So shout out to you guys. If you're looking, um, much love, much respect, all that good stuff. Moving here is a, is a symbol of personal growth and personal development as a man and as a professional. So I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'm going to get this set up situated a little better uh eventually but right now just wall and um and that's it i came here in september so i experienced colorado winter i experienced the end of colorado fall kind of like you know i uh, uh i think football season was in was was like in the middle when i got here i don't know it was like just like it was in the middle of the beginning but it takes a lot of courage to come to a place you've never been and um and it takes a lot of courage to come to a place that you don't have any friends i don't have any friends here you know i'm thankful that like i said my weekend team i like them a lot um but i try to uh to separate friendship from professionalism um because you can be friendly what you should be friendly with your coworkers. that's a that's a blessing that's a miracle you know that's very good if you like your coworkers enough to want to be friends with them but but that's not a requisite you know, you can absolutely despise each other as long as the work's good, you know. Um, but I am thankful that I like um, all my coworkers. I mean, you know, I like some more than others, of course, you know. But 
uh, I like all my coworkers, but I want friends outside of work, you know, because my coworkers have friends outside of work. Because most of my coworkers have either been born and raised in Colorado, but they have been here um, either their whole lives or been here for years. So, you know, they've developed friends or they have spouses and they don't need friends. You know, I mean, I guess you need friends even if you're married, but your best friend is the person you live with, hopefully. Um, I tell you what, when I got the call to come here, thank goodness I I didn't have, it wasn't a thought, I was coming. I was coming, baby. I just, the moving is stressful. Anybody who's moved down the street knows how hard moving is, but moving from Louisiana to Colorado ain't no joke. I know I got a, I got a coworker, a former coworker who might be moving to Hawaii, and I'm like, love, that's a different level. I got another former coworker who moved from Louisiana to Texas, and then from Texas to Dubai, you know, in the in the UAE, all the way in the uh, in the Middle East. Man, she live in Dubai now. She's doing it real big. So shout out to you. I don't want to say your name, but shout out to you. But yeah, I'm a man who never even traveled. I, and I didn't realize this. I'm like, why is snow so cool to me? Why is these mountains so cool to me? And I realized, like, though I've traveled out, out of the country, I've traveled to a few different states here and there, they've all been warm and southern, you know. Um, I The northest I've been is Washington, D.C. And the, and the most west, bleh, west, the most west I've been has been uh, Nevada. So, uh, so coming to a place that snows, I didn't like, I didn't vacation to places that snowed, you know, so, so uh, places with mountains or snowy mountains, you know, I've been to Jamaica, they got mountains and stuff like that, but yeah, man, this is a beautiful state and it's a beautiful place and there's a lot of, and people so far have been real nice, um, you know, you know about Southern hospitality and everybody's super nice, but people are super nice here, you know. I, I I just imagined, you know, especially, you know, I, not just visiting, but living in a different state, the further north I went, the meaner the people would be. Um, just because, I, I don't know, and I've never been to New York, no disrespect to New Yorkers, but I just imagined them to be very rude and very uh, impatient and not very nice. Um, but I'm sure that's just a stereotype, so... Um, so I, I imagine, like, I imagine like New York is like the meanest people and then Louisiana and the South, uh, Georgia and, and, and Mississippi, you know, nice folks, you know, my whole family's still in Louisiana. I'm the only one, um, well, you know, everybody's got family members that they know very well and family members they only see once every 10 years. Like the family members that I know very well, 99% of them are still in Louisiana. And uh, my, I got a cousin that lives in um, Alabama. Besides her, I'm it. I'm the only one who left. And um, it's 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 a new experience. But that's what I wanted. I wanted to do that. I, I knew my whole. I knew from young that I was gonna live in a different state. I wasn't gonna spend the rest of my life, my entire life, or the rest of my life, however you want to phrase it. I wasn't gonna be in Louisiana my entire life. I knew that. That was my personal goal. That was my personal goal. That's not something I wanted in life. So, um, but it takes talent and it takes skill. It takes a little bit of luck to get here, to get to wherever you want to go. And um, I got the call. Thank goodness. So, yeah, man, uh, I come at the podcast episode 102, 102. After many years of not doing it, I'm back at it. I don't know if I'm going to do it weekly, monthly, whatever. I'm going to do it when I feel like doing it. And that's what it's going to be. I used to do it once a week. I did 100 episodes once a week, thank goodness. And thank, shout out to everybody who helped me with that. But the Aquaman podcast from here on out is going to be whenever I feel like doing it. I got a message. I'll talk to you later. Um, before I go, let me tell you something about... I'm looking at myself and I'm looking at the camera. Let me tell you something about um, dating sites, okay? This is just me ripping, ranting. I want to tell you something about dating sites, okay? Your boy GP is single, okay? Single, ready to mingle, you know? Um, I'm not in a rush to get married. I'm not in a rush for anything. I'm just seeing what's out there. I'm on a few dating sites, and I'm going to tell you which ones I like, why, and I'm going to tell you which ones I don't like and why. Number one dating site don't do, don't do eHarmony. I don't care. eHarmony is boo-boo. 
and because you don't get nothing for free and if you get, if you want to pay for it it's going to cost you a lot of money and when you pay for it you, in my experience again eHarmony make commercials they market themselves as you can find your future husband you can find your future wife here whatever maybe and some people have i mean i don't know none of them but some people have not me not happening listen you got to pay for eHarmony and you send messages but the people who receive the messages, they might not pay for eHarmony. And if they ain't paying for eHarmony, they can't see your messages. So you paying all this money, and it's a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? It ain't cheap because the person that you like might not be paying for it. And if they can't, if they ain't paying for it, they can't read your messages. They have no idea that they know that you sent them something, but they can't read it. They can't read what you say. So it is pointless, and there's no way to know who's paying for it and who ain't. Because I wouldn't waste my time for the, with, the, with the women who aren't paying for it because they can't read what I'm telling them. Anyway, um, I like uh, my favorite dating site is Hinge, H-I-N-G-E. I think that you get a lot for free, and I think you get a lot more for paying. So shout out to Hinge. I've been on a couple of dates with Hinge. What makes it better is the fact that when I send somebody a message, whether they're paying for it or not, when I send them a like, not a message, when I send them a like, they see it. I know that they're seeing it, you know. Um, you can see more profiles that like you if you're paying for it. If you're not paying for it, I think I think you can only see the, 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 the last five who, um, who likes you, but once you get through those five, you see another, you know, as you go along, you keep seeing them, you keep seeing them, right? And if you're paying for it, then you can see all of them, no matter how many you got, right? I believe that's how it works. But whether you're paying for it or not, or whether the person you're interested in is paying for it or not, they see that you like them and they can they can either like you back or not. Ain't none of this blind dating stuff that Bumble and Tinder do. See, with Tinder, you can like somebody, that person that you like has to, has to by chance, stumble upon your profile and like you back. So there's too many variables that you have to consider when you like somebody, you know? And then with Bumble, Bumble's the same thing. They have blind matching, you know, but, um, but and this is funny because Bumble is, the CEO of Bumble is a woman, and Bumble is geared towards women. Like they have women in mind first, which I support and like. But here's the thing. When you like somebody on Bumble and they like you back, you match, right? You match. The woman has to say something first in order for there to be a conversation. The man can't say something first. I don't know how it is for the homosexual community. I don't know how that works. But in, in heterosexual communities, um, with Bumble, the woman has to, you know, has to make the first move if you match. If you match. Again, two blind uh, dating, two blind matches. You like somebody, you have to hope that person likes you back, finds your account, and then like you back. So it's, it's a blind matching process. A lot of the women I talk to who are on Bumble, who, you know, just like co-workers and friends and stuff like that. The women I talk to, they say they don't like being the first one to make a move. I, maybe it's old fashioned, maybe not, I don't know, but they prefer the man make the first move. Again, again, that's might be old fashioned thinking. That's just, you know, how we were raised as a community, as a society, whatever. Women, I t maybe, maybe, and maybe it's just a Southern thing, you know, but the women I talk to, they don't like having to make the first move. They just, they would rather let the, the thing laps before they have to make the first move. Because if you, if the woman doesn't make the first move within 48 hours, it's gone forever. You can't talk to the girl. So I've matched with many women who have, who have again, matched. They had to like me also. You know, I like them. They like me back. They got to make the first move. They decide not to. Because they don't want to. Like, who is that stupid for? Is it stupid for the women? Because you know the rules, you know you got to talk first, but you don't want to. Why are you on this website? Or is it stupid for Bumble to have this 
in place. It makes sense. I think it's a good idea, you know, because that way I know that the woman is interested because she has to talk. She has to be the first one to say something, you know. That's how I know that she's interested because she has to be the first one to say something, you know. But they don't want to. They don't want to be the first one to, to make the first move, you know. So that's my little dating rant. Online dating sucks, for real, for real. So if you you looking at this, you got you a boyfriend, you got you a girlfriend, you got you a husband, a wife, whatever you got. Congratulations. If you met them people outside of this little tiny square I got right here. Congratulations, because you did it right. Online dating sucks. I don't like it. And it doesn't help that we in a global pandemic that doesn't shut the world down. You know what I'm saying? But things are opening up more and more. It's your boy, GP. I come at the podcast. Don't email me. Don't do none of that, because I ain't got none of that set up. I fly at the seat of my pants. That's how I live my entire life. You know, I'm, I'm going to get there when I get there. Send me email later. Send me comments on this thing it's gonna be on instagram youtube whatever whatever shout out to colorado shout out to louisiana much love much respect to the whole world i can't wait to see as much of it as i can and um i want to send a special shout out to my only friend in colorado currently um amy i love you you're my best friend uh moving here would have been really difficult without you um so i want you to know that i love you it wouldn't have been impossible because I would have made it work. I'm coming, baby. Nothing is impossible. If you want it, go get it. You can you can do it. You know, just take time. You won't get told no. I got told no a million times before I got told yes the one time. So that's how it is in relationships and professionalism and and, and, and everything. I commit the podcast. It's your boy GP. Much love, much respect. Uh, I'll figure out how to keep this thing going as I move forward. Peace.